Chattanooga Police Department landed their first case just a day in the new year. This is the That's first crime committed in the area. These gangs and drugs are all a part of the week long round of hot and killed on the more than 100 people behind bars. Michael Todd Kelly. Yeah, that's me. Also known as Big Mike Mike Wo. I couldn't sleep. Bad dream. It's the third time straight waking up in the middle of the night. I can't go back to sleep. So much on my mind. I'm thinking, how can I do better? How can I make a difference? The city in the valley, born and raised. Chattanooga, Tennessee. One hour and 30 minutes from Atlanta, Georgia. Home to Lookout Mountain. Some say people in the mountain run the city. And oh yes, home of the first privatized jail. I can remember being a young male as a teen with a lot of rage, a lot of anger and not understanding the system in which I lived in. Violence has always been in the community. The difference is, it has increased in the youth. The Bible Bell South. In Chattanooga, there's literally a church on every corner. And still, our communities are in horrible shape. Shavaka Vincent, 15 years old, Stabbed during the fight and later died at the hospital. Kiosha Ford, 13 years old, hit by a stray bullet, leaving her bedridden. A lot of issues going around with gangs, or the kids have no role models or whatever, but I guess now we. I'm tired of coming together after events, after somebody get hurt. We need to start, you know, being actually really preventive and not just kind of preaching to the choir, so. So why is there so much violence in our urban communities? And why have the violence increased in the youth? From 1970 into the 80s, we had a community. We had the dads in the home, we had industry in the city. Industry left the city. So there's more of a technological aspect in the city now. So when you got divorce rates high and all these things happening, especially me being a minister, I know that the divorce rate is higher in, per se in the churches than it is anywhere else. So therefore there was a breakdown of family. So when there's no father, you get to the second and third generation of individuals, there's no leadership. So therefore we're left to our own consensus and figure it out for ourselves. So as young men trying to figure it out and they don't have education, it's to get rich of that trend. So it's, it's out there in the street, give it to little mamas, give it to individuals, do it how you do it. And there's no, no self-esteem, there's no self-awareness. There's only what it is, there's only moment to moment. There's no legacy, there's no future, there's no hope. So when you have an uh, environment set in that stone, that, that's what you have. An escalation of violence, uh, more exposure, and children being at a smaller age being exposed to things they shouldn't be exposed to. You got children two or three years old cussing, you mother da da da, blase blase. You got a lot of children doing a lot of things, but what we need to do is be treat, now teaching our children how to read, educating our children. And if you're not educated yourself, how can you educate your children? A lot of you feel like they have a lot to prove to their friends and, you know, different things like this. So I think it's a big influence on, in the community, the schools uh, of that nature. And uh, it's more or less of a fitting in type thing, not wanting to be a out. I think a lot of it 
has to do with they don't have anything else to do and uh, anything positive to do. Once you get them engaged in something positive, giving them a place to go after school to keep them off the streets, they're less likely to do things like that. Today's younger society has a different aspect of growing up or being brought up. I mean, everyone says it starts at home, but then again, we have some, our, today's younger generation, our parents of today, is a, we're basically a victim of our own creation because we have spoiled our kids more than we were spoiled. Back when I was coming up, most expensive pair of tennis shoes might have been, and I'm telling my age, might have been $70, and that was top 10 by Adidas. That's before Jordans even came out. $79. But I had to work to get those shoes. Or we give our kids Xboxes or little Game Boys or whatever. The values are instilled by working or getting what you want. It's not instilled now because we're giving our kids that. I mean, prime example, I've been at a mall when Jordans come out. You have a mother, a family of four that I'm not downrating them, but they can barely feed herself, but all of them have Jordans. Where's the priorities? Today's society doesn't have priorities. I mean, the younger generation doesn't have priorities, or well, it's in the wrong perspective. And even if we look at, they everybody blame it on rap, that's not necessarily, because look at your rap moguls. Jay-Z, what has he done? 50 Cent, what has he done? So stop it. Everyone that's taught, even T.I., he's been the president or whatever, but he's a corporate commodity. He's changed his way, so they can put it on rap or whatever. These guys are not, it's about money. Okay, we're well, doing the right thing. Follow what they've done, corporate America. But today's youth are just looking for a handout, a free handout. They look at the thug life or the hard life, but they can't really live I think there's a lot of violence here in Chattanooga because there aren't enough people to step up to be role models. I think here in Chattanooga specifically, we have a lot of people doing great things, but everybody is so focused on themselves that they're not reaching back. And it's important to reach back. We have parents that are raising kids, single parent homes, and they're not able to spend as, as much time with their child as they want to. And so you have other family members that would want to step up, but maybe it's tension in the family. You have fathers that avoid child support. So you have these people, these young people in the city that are acting out and no one is there to discipline them, to give them guidance and to say, no, that's not right. This is what you need to do. Uh, first, I think we have to start off with uh, the leaders, you know, uh, have no leaders and the first the people that want to be leaders the first thing they tend to go to is church you know there's nothing wrong with church you know but I think these days and these days and times you're gonna have to reach these youth in a different direction you have to come at them in a different way uh, they they hungry out here you know uh, they see no way out they they uh, think nobody they, they want respect for some reason and they're gonna get it by any means necessary. Uh, a lot of our forefathers and people that we looked up to, you know, that we that we idolized as kids, uh, you know, are dead and gone. And I think we haven't set anyone in front of them that they can idolize. You know, we we're there for a second, but the drug dealer, the uh, pimp, the hustler, the street dude, he's there every day. You know, so. Uh, I think once they see that, they get adapted to it, it becomes a part of their life. Well, I think uh, our ancestors laid out the groundwork when uh, we were vigilant in the struggle. And when I mean vigilant in the struggle is that when we were in an overt assault in our communities. And one of the prolific chants that they used to state was, no justice, no peace. And so that exudes us to believe that if there is no justice, then there will be no peace. And because there is no peace, that's the reason why we have the violence in our communities. If we had justice, then there wouldn't be violence. And so that is dictating to us that we have to look at a deeper root of why the injustice has caused so much violence in our community. It was through their thinking 
that if there was justice, then there would be peace. And because there is injustice, that is the reason why there is violence. So once we get to the point that justice come to our communities, then the violence in our communities will cease. I mean, violence is not like, you know, people aren't violent. Violence is a, is a kind of reaction to something. You know, it's, it's symptomatic of something. You know, uh, you, don't, you don't, like, if someone is, if someone is like, uh, in an accident, you know, and they're, and they're screaming, uh, you, you don't make them stop screaming. You find out what's hurting them, right? And there is a, a lot of pain and discouragement in the community. And in, and in particular, the black community here. Because I, what I've noticed is that um, the black and the white community is, is very separate here. But it still is. Uh, there's a lot of language about it not being separate, but it still is. In a lot of our poor communities, black poor communities, um, there are seeds of, of discouragement. There is uh, destructive relationships, climates of futility, learned irresponsibility, loss of purpose, and all of these things collude with uh, providing a, just, this, just this, this sense of, of self-limitation among young people. Also, I think the violence can be directly uh, linked to uh, illiteracy. If you don't have a capacity to kind of read your world, uh, not just read a book, but read your world, you, you get frustrated and you become uh, aggressive. So, so I mean, violence, I think, is in Chattanooga in particular, is, is becoming increasingly more um, profound because the community is shut off from a lot of resources. Resources in school, resources in terms of jobs. It's a complicated answer um, because I think there's a lot of symptoms that we see every day, like the shootings and all that stuff, I think are symptoms of bigger issues. I think. A lot of the time we get wrapped up in a conversation about like how we need better parents, we need better schools, etc. But I think really at the root of why there's so much violence in the city is there's a lot of poverty in the city. And until we fix the issues that are causing like systemic poverty in the city of Chattanooga, there's going to be violence as a consequence of that. You know what I'm saying? Everything has been approached wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, just as a young... I don't want to just keep calling or, or just referring to gangbangers, but just as the young generation, as a youth, uh, you know what I'm saying, you, you have to respect them. You see what I'm saying? You have to respect anybody, you know what I'm saying? But but uh, I feel like you just, uh, you know, have to respect them and, and, and approach the situation uh, at a totally different way, you know what I'm saying? Like, the violence is going to continue to rise, especially if, if, if police pull up on, on just anybody, 16, 17, they already uh, looked at as a criminal. You know what I'm saying? They ain't even gotta have a gun. They ain't gotta have no background. You know what I'm saying? But but being put in that environment, the police already look at them as as just that criminal. You know what I'm saying? You you can't be portrayed as that criminal and then just be a good guy. You know what I'm saying? You 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 gonna be that bad guy. You are already in that hood. You know what I'm saying? All your friends do it. You know what I'm saying? Police treat treat you like you do. You know what I'm saying? It's just I feel like you gotta uh approach this youth different. I feel like you you Make them come together, you know what I'm saying? Talk to them with motivation. You feel what I'm saying? Instead of, you know what, you gang banging, we're gonna give you 30 years. I mean, you know, you, you gotta enforce the law, stop it. But I'm saying, enforce other laws too. You know what I'm saying? Try to try to see what the problem is. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know why they're killing people like this now. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I, I, was, I was in there my, my 17, 18, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't run around with the crowd now, you feel me? But I know if they're doing it, it's something going on. Years went on. This happened after year after year. Then they didn't see a need of education because people did not put the true history in the history books. The true history of us accomplishing so many things. The only thing you see in history books is slavery. The only thing you see in most of history books is negativity. The only thing you see in history books is uh, uh, someone entertaining. Never about this right here. The cell phone where African American actually developed, named Russell, that still lives now, that was challenged to put to make these cell phones. Kids don't know this. If I feel that if a young man or woman know their value, if they know what to what they what, what their for, what they pass, then they're so saying that we can become more than what we are. They're gonna see hope because right now 
They don't see any hope. Only they see is fast money and I might die between 25. Not seeing a, 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 a hope of I'm going to reach 30, 40, 50. I'll see my grandkids. I will help train them. They don't see in the black community because of the lack of opportunities. You know, there was an experiment that our government performed back in the 1940s under Roosevelt where they experimented with rats. They put rats in an environment where they had plenty of space, had plenty of food, and they learned that those rats got along well with one another. But what they did is they took that space away and they stacked them up in a confined environment. They turned the heat up. They made the food scarce. Now those very rats began to turn on one another. So when they set up the black community in America under the New Deal, and they set up the housing developments in the black community, you notice they didn't have air conditioners. You notice in, the, in particular in the larger cities, they were all stacked one on top of another. Welfare check come once a month. Food scarce, got supply, you know, got scarce. So these people who once may have saw one another as family, begin to fight for scarce resources. The number one thing of every human being is survival of the fittest. So the, when you see the violence that's going on in our, in, in our communities, we're dealing with young people who were not provided opportunities. We're dealing with young people that when our older people so-called made it during the struggles of the 60s and the 70s, they forgot to teach and sit us down and train us and teach us of what this was going to be like. So we, we, we fell for it. You know, we got a good job. You know, we got an education, or so-called got a good job. Now, all of a sudden, jobs are scarce. Now, all of a sudden, the first people, we always, what? First one, last one hired, first one fired. So now you're seeing in the black community, there's no jobs, there's no opportunities. The brothers don't want to go to school and learn about no George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and all this crap that they teaching. So they dropping out, and they hitting the streets, and they gonna get paid. So this is nothing but a product of the environment that we live in. I miss him a lot, but sometimes I know God do everything for a reason. Sometimes I be like, he gonna walk through the door, or he gonna call me, he gonna ask for something. But to me, the violence that's going on, I, I don't really think that they trying to do too much about it. Um, we have a new aquarium, we have a new riverfront, we have, you know, all these really great things that, that, are, that are awesome and good to have and that we should be proud of. But did that renaissance happen for everybody? And the emphatic answer is absolutely no it did.